Okay. Now I thought it'd be good to look at some vocabulary about the clothing. When you're talking about the weather, we often say, oh, did you bring an umbrella? Yes, you should know that word. An umbrella, in fact, that's an interesting picture. I'm not really too sure if that's a painting. I think that's actually a painting, not a real photo. Um, anyway, so take an umbrella with you. I don't like to carry umbrellas around very much. Um, in fact, I have a magic umbrella. I have this umbrella. Every time I take my umbrella out of my house, I don't need it. So like, oh, it's raining very heavily. Oh, okay, get dressed, have breakfast, get my clothes, grab my umbrella, go outside. Oh, it stopped raining. Go to school, go to class, go to work, do, 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 do. go inside the school. Oh, it's raining. And while I'm inside, it will keep raining. It's amazing. Every time I take this umbrella, it just doesn't rain. I never need it. So actually, I don't like to carry umbrellas because it's a lot of hassle and trouble to carry an umbrella. So I prefer to take a raincoat. Now, there's my raincoat. It's actually very light because it's you know, not that cold in Australia. It's a um, very, very thin raincoat. It's actually a rain jacket more than a raincoat. Um, so I prefer to have a rain raincoat, so I can just put it in a bag, put it in my, put it in a small plastic bag at the bottom of my bag, and it's there if I need it. But I don't have to carry it in another hand. So I prefer a raincoat to an umbrella. But that's some of the kind of thing you might talk about. Oh, have you got an umbrella? Oh, did you bring an umbrella today? Oh, does anyone have an umbrella I could borrow? You know, you'll hear that a lot on a wet day. Now, of course, sometimes it's really wet and you've got to go outside in the garden or you know your feet are going to get wet. And this is something that has very different words in different countries. Now, they're called Wellington boots or wellies in the UK. Um, in Australia, we call them gum boots. Um, gum is a kind of, well, gum tree, kind of tree in Australia, gum boots. And I believe in America, they are called galoshes. Now, if you use the word wellies or galoshes in Australia, maybe people will know what you're talking about. Um, if you use the word gumboots in, well in the UK or America, probably most people won't know what you're talking about there. Um, and again, galoshes is not a common phrase in Australia or the UK. So, oh, ah, that's meant to have my thing that comes up. Too late. I can't go back and fix that. So anyway, so let's just, we'll get to that one last. Clothing, and not just clothing, but things we need for hot weather. And this is something that's actually very expensive in China, but I use it a lot in the summer weather. And that is sunscreen, or in Australia, we say sun cream or sunscreen. We also have this phrase sunblock, um, depending on what country you're in. Um, I can't remember which one's the US and which one's the UK. In Australia, we say sunscreen or sun cream. Uh, sunscreen is more common a uh, phrase in Australia, I believe. Um, but again, different cities and people will say different things. So, you know, you put the cream on, you rub it on, and it will stop you from getting sunburned. Uh, when, you know, when you do go a little bit dark, we do not say, oh, he goes black in the sun. Because nobody goes black. I mean, black is, this is black. Nobody goes that color. We say we tan, T-A-N. He's got a nice tan. And I'm sorry, very, 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 very white skin means you're not very healthy. A little bit of a tan is nice. That's a nice colored tan. It's healthy skin. Um, so going out into the sun, you don't want to get burnt, but having a light tan can be nice. It shows you're a healthy person that spends time outside. Um, I probably shouldn't need to go through this one. I haven't put hat on this list because hat is so obvious. Sunglasses or sunnies. I always have sunglasses. I wear these all the time. Um, I never leave my house without my sunglasses. Um, and kind of shoes we often wear in summer. Now, these have a very different name in Australia to the rest of the world. In most places in the world, they are called flip-flops. Okay, so they are flip-flops. But in Australia, we don't say flip-flops. We say the phrase thongs. That's interesting because thongs is um, very, very different in other countries. Men, if you walk into England, if you're in England or America or pretty much every country but Australia, say, I'm wearing my thongs. People are going to look at you very funny because 
the bottom part of this is a thong. Well, not this one. The thong is actually really, really thin, much thinner than this. It's actually just got a little string at the back. That's a thong. I mean, women wear to be very sexy, usually. Um, so thongs in Australia are these. In most countries, thongs look like that. So only in Australia do you use the word thongs. Be careful with that. Although when I'm traveling, I do like to say that because I know it's usually quite funny. If I'm in America or England, I go, oh, I need to buy a pair of thongs. Like what? Oh, I, I, my thongs broke. I need some new thongs. You wear thongs? Yeah, I wear thongs. You don't wear thongs? No, I don't wear thongs. I'm not a woman. <laughs> I joke with them. It's quite a funny thing to do. I do it all the time. Okay. Um, now, depending on what we're wearing, men in Australia, England, and America, we normally go swimming wearing a pair of swimming shorts like this called board shorts in Australia. Sometimes we call them swimming trunks or swimming shorts. But in Australia, I think America as well, they're board shorts, like wearing on your sort still, blah, blah, blah. Wearing on your surfboard or other kind of equipment you use in the water. So they are board shorts or my boardies. So we've got sunnies, we've got boardies. We use that a lot in Australia. And I think swimming trunks is a very British way of saying things. Now we also have the bikini. So this is a bikini, is a two-part swimsuit. And some bikinis are thongs, meaning they're really, really thin. So bikini, swimsuit, swimming costume, cosy. We also say in Australia, cosy. Bathing suit or bathers. I believe swimsuit is American. Bathing suit is British, I think. In Australia, we say swimming costume or your swimmers. Bring your swimmers. Oh, come along to the beach tomorrow and don't forget your swimmers or your cosy. So we use a lot of shortened words in Australian English. Now, what about some different weather and activities? So what do you like to do in winter? So we talked before about building a snowman or having a snowball fight. What other things can you do? Two main activities. And I'm sorry, I don't have photos for these questions. Okay, yep, you can go skiing. So skiing is, of course, whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. when you go down the hill and you have the two long pieces of wood on your feet. Then you have snowboarding. Snow, snowboarding is when you have a big piece of wood and you stand on it and go down the mountain. Uh, you also have ice skating. Now, ice skating is when you have the shoes and you go whoosh, whoosh, whoosh on the ice. So these are the most common things for people to do in winter. There's also sledding, or, uh, which is where you, go, you sit down on like a small box and slide down the snow, more for children. So sledding. Um, what do you usually do on a sunny day? Now, normally on a sunny day, I like to go to the park. You might fly a kite, you might go for a swim or play some kind of sport or outdoor activity. When it's a sunny day, I love to go outside. At the moment, it's now 11.46 in Australia. Hopefully, I will finish this video and the ninth video today. And then probably this afternoon, I will go for a nice long walk out in the bush because it's a beautiful sunny day here. What about beach activities? What are some different activities people do at the beach? Now, of course, we have swimming. You heard me mention surfing. Also, we might play beach volleyball or beach football, beach soccer. We might make a sand castle. Uh, some people just go fishing, maybe not in the middle of the beach, at the end of the beach, they'll go fishing. Um, also, there's many other sports. There is wind surfing, where you stand up and hold the sail like a board. You stand up and hold it. Then you have jet skis. A jet ski is like a motorbike on the water. <laughs> Very expensive in way high. Um, much more expensive than China to do that. Um, and there's many other water sports. Paddle boarding is another one. That's where, you, again, you stand up on a board, but you have a long stick and you move yourself through the water. Now, lots and lots of water sport activities. I can't go through all of them, but have a look at those ones. Hopefully, we might have the subtitles. Thank you very much, Rocky, for doing this. The guy, I just found out who the person is translating this. So thank you very much, everyone, to Rocky, who is helping with the subtitles. Um, hopefully, doing a very, very good job. Thank you so much for your hard work. Okay, um, let's continue with a deeper discussion for the last five minutes here. Um, 
I like to get, I wanted to get this one a bit sooner so we could talk a little bit more. So how does the weather affect people's lives? Well, the most basic effect weather has on people's lives is of course the clothing we wear and the activities we choose to do. Of course, if it's a sunny day, we go outside. If it's rainy or snowy, we probably stay inside. When it's warm, we go outside more than when it's very hot. When it's very hot, we might just lie around and do nothing all day. When it's very cold, we might stay indoors and do nothing. And yeah, you know, that's the most basic effect. It's where we go on our holidays, if it's winter or summer, we're going to choose very different places for our holidays. But for us, we know we mostly get affected in little ways. But for some people, they are strongly affected by the weather. So which jobs are most commonly affected by the weather? We talked about one of these jobs briefly in the earlier scene. That's right. Farmers. I think farmers are amazing, important people. They feed us. Without farmers, we don't have all that amazing food we talked about last week or last lesson. Um, so they can be affected by drought and flood. If there's too much water or not enough water, all of their crops will die. Their animals might die. And that's happening in Australia. We're having to kill off cows and sheep because we don't have enough water and enough food to give the animals something to eat and drink. Um, and so that affects their whole life. But pretty much any job that wor works outside, if you're a soccer player, the weather affects your game. You know, some teams play well in the rain, some teams play terribly in the rain. If you're a taxi driver, driving the rain means you probably get more customers wanting to be picked up to take a taxi, but it also means the roads are more dangerous. Anyone that works in terms like looking after gardens, cleaning the street, all of those people, people that sell food or things on the street, of course, don't do very good business on a rainy day. So all of those people, their jobs are strongly affected by the weather. So we talked about drought and flood in Australia. What are some common weather problems in your country? I know in Weihai, we often have a typhoon in the beginning of summer. Um, not always every year, but there's some very, very heavy rain and wind uh, at the beginning of summer, but otherwise nothing major. In the south of China, you also have some typhoons. And around Beijing, I know they also suffer from drought a lot. Um, anyway, talk about anything else that you can think of that you have problems with the weather in your area. Actually, we build our homes differently because of the weather. So how might homes be built differently because of the weather? And I can say that my house in Australia is really, really, really cold in winter. But in summer, even when the weather's 35, 40 degrees, it's not that hot inside. The houses are built, um, have a lot of shade on the roof, um, big, big, big windows in Australia so we can open the windows wide in summer and get the wind through. In winter places, you generally want smaller windows so the heat stays inside. Um, things like this. If there's a snowy area, they often have roofs like this, not like this. Because if the roofs are flat and lots of snow falls on them, it will collapse and put too much weight on the building. So in snowy areas, they will build roofs like this. And the final question to think about, what do you think about climate change? Personally, I think the people that don't believe in climate change are not very clever. The world is getting hotter, the weather is getting crazier, um, we need to look after the environment a lot more than we already do. So I, I strongly believe in climate change and I believe that we do need to do more to look after this planet and to look after our environment. Ride a bike or walk as much as possible in, or take a bus instead of driving or taking a taxi. You know, try not to put your air conditioning on all the time in summer. My home in Weihai, we open up the front window, we open up the back window, and we let the air come through, and we try not to use the air conditioning too much in summer. So that's all for today. Even a boring topic like weather can be a little bit interesting when you have me. Okay, thank you very much, guys. Another video finished. We've got one more of the set topics, so please send me through or send us through your suggested topics for video 10 and hopefully I'll be making that one in a few weeks when I get your suggestions. Thank you very much, everyone, and have a wonderful evening, afternoon, morning, day, weekend, night.
Bye-bye.